My first guest this morning joins us from Harvard University School of Public Health and is a former member of the White House Council of Economic Advisors to talk about health care. Professor Catherine Baker, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, professors, you just heard from the secretary, uh, the health secretary. I mean, she says that it, essentially this will uh, certainly get insurance companies in line, but is this going to really help control costs for everybody? This bill, I think, does a great job at covering the uninsured, and that's a really important thing for their health and well-being. I worry, though, that we haven't taken enough steps to slow health care spending growth and to finance the enormous new program that's just been enacted. I think in the long run, it's going to place a big strain on our fiscal situation. What in that bill makes you worried about that? Well, the cost of covering the uninsured is in the billions and billions of dollars. The bill is deficit reducing because it raises taxes in other areas, and those taxes could have been used to cover other parts of the deficit. I think people have the idea that covering the uninsured in and of itself saves money, and it doesn't. That doesn't mean it's not a really important policy priority, but it's very expensive. But what about uh, the? Uh, but what about those who say that uh, you know the higher costs of this of insurance, uh, the higher costs of just medical medical care in general is eventually going to be passed on to us with higher premiums? Does this do anything to stop that? I worry that it doesn't do enough. There are some great pilots involved in the bill that would test different ways of paying doctors and paying hospitals, test different ways of promoting prevention. Those are promising in the long run, but I don't think we have enough information yet about how they might bring premium growth down. But the fact of the matter is, is though, that this is not going to be, uh, you know, this is not going to be immediate, right? I mean, some are going to see an immediate impact, but others, in terms of paying for this, it could be a very gradual process. We're talking about deadlines, you know, in 2013, 2014, and so forth. Uh, is that going to make it a lot easier for the public to digest, but also for the medical system itself to adjust to this bill? And I do think that that adjustment period is important, especially because you need the supply of doctors and hospitals to adjust to having a lot more uninsured people covered by insurance and using those services. But you also need the mode of delivery to adjust. Right now, we're spending a lot of money on uncoordinated or duplicated care. If some of those reforms of payments are going to really take hold, then hospitals and healthcare systems need to adjust the way they deliver care to reduce the care that really doesn't improve people's health by much. So you're saying that none of what we've seen in this bill is going to address that then. So are we back to square, I mean, are we not square one, but almost to square one with this? I wouldn't say none. I'd say there's some promising ideas in there, but what I'm unclear about is whether we have the political will to then ramp those up and really ratchet down health care spending that's of questionable value. And that itself is not in the bill, although the seeds of it are if we're willing to nurture them. Okay. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Professor Catherine Baker from, Har from Harvard University's School of Public Health.